Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. Well, we're going to continue on with our R8 tooling. So, as we left off last week, we <laughs> I've got a dog here playing with a toy. <laughs> um, yeah, as we're saying, as we left off last week, we roughed out the adapter for the boring head. So the tail of the R8, we've left that 10 thou up on size and the tapered section, we've left that 50 thou up on size. So to give us enough wiggle room to put a slight radius in the corner there. So all that's left on this part is yeah, the finished OD and there's some features on the back to do. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna, on all the tooling, we're gonna complete this section first on them all and then Individually, we'll do the well, whatever the tool is on the other end. So, we've got our first piece of bar chucked up in the lathe, so we'll start roughing that one out, and then all the rest, the other five, will be exactly the same operation. So, I'll probably just film one, uh, there's no need to watch the same thing twice. So, over to the lathe. One thing before, uh, as we said, we're doing all the R8 sections first, but prior to that, each piece of bar stock will be roughed down to the largest um, diameter of the tool that we're doing. So that will just eliminate a bit more material we have to take off later on. So we'll take it down to the largest diameter and then we'll do the R8s. Okay, so we're well on the way to roughing out the R8 tooling. So we've roughed out the R8 feature on them all. Of course the taper, the undercut and the small diameter feature at the end we'll do on a, another operation. So that's that part and then they've all had the respective diameters turned for the largest diameter feature on the part. So the last one to go, the last cab off the rank is the ER40 collet chuck. So we'll get this piece of bar chucked up and we'll start setting, um, we'll rough that one out. Of course um, this one here, it's going to be have the most uh, technical features of work holding out of all of them as the, we have the taper on the inside, the thread, the section and the R8 feature. So the internal taper and the R8 feature and this, it's all got to run concentric within nothing. <laughs> so it's either going to be dead nuts on or, or it's going to be scrap metal. Okay, the last one. We'll get the blank set up for the ER collet chuck. So because I previously faced and centred all of the bars, I'll just bring it back up onto the centre when we nip it down. The reason I did face and centre all the bars first was because um, we're only, well because of the amount that we're going to be hanging out, so we're only gripping 
on half an inch of the stock on the end here so I can get maximum amount of material removed. So with only half an inch gripping there and this hanging out there, if I was to face it off here, it's going to start wanting to move around, chatter and carry on. So that's why we did it in a previous operation. The only difference now being, as well as we have to clock the bar here, we do have to clock, clock up the centre. So get these tightened down. Get the indicator on. Okay. The reason I am using a cheetah bar is just to get that bit of extra tension down on the jaws and it does make it easier to find adjust to control the chuck key when we're just moving half a thou a thou on the indicator. But we do have to have this rather tight due to the tool pressure or we we'll just want to constantly push this back in the chuck. No. I mean, some people have, there are adjustable stops you can put down the back of the chuck. It could be something I could make up one day, but uh, never ever had one, never used one, so always done it the way I've always done it. So what we do now is we set the indicator up on the centre. I mean, it's not recommended practice you tighten up your chuck with a cheetah bar, but in real life, reality, that's in a job shop situation, um, that is not uncommon. Come on, dial indicator stand, play the game. So what we're doing now, truing up the centre, this takes the load, the side loading off our live centre. Right. We're just getting the high spot. We'll just give it a belt with a hammer.
It's either going too far or not enough. Okay. Okay, we'll start our roughing. First cuts on a slow speed, one hundred and sixty revs. Just going to do 30 thou deep passes. I've been taking uh, pretty liberal cuts, or not liberal, sorry. Um, no big heavy cuts roughing this down because of the amount of, or the amount we've had to do, and the amount of loading it puts on the gearing and the aprons is quite incredible. So, anyway. <laughs> It does leave a stringy chip, but that's just the price we've got to pay. Okay, we've roughed our stock down to the this part of the the R forty chuck. So we are above size here, but that's fine. We'll finish turn that uh, at a later date. So what we're going to do now, we'll flip the bar around so we can turn the uh, R eight features on the other end. Okay, we're all turned around, indicated in, so we're just going to face and centre this end and then we'll bring it back out again. chatter on the full width of the centre drill. Further slid back out the chuck and get the centre centred in. And we'll start roughing this out. Now, this one here we did, I'll grab one of the other pieces that we've done. So, on the other pieces, we did the R8 feature first. 
Um, this one, this end of the bar will be the head of the tool feature first and then the R8. Now the reason we have, we're doing it um, opposite to the way we did these is with the collet chuck, I'll get the collet chuck. As I said, our finishing operation, everything has to be done in one operation without um, removing this from the machine. So what we're going to end up doing, so we've machined this, we've roughed out this section, so now we're on to this. But we've left the bar stock longer on this one and only this one on purpose. So that will enable us to have a little bit here to grip on at the end. So when we're machining all of this, we'll be gripping out here. So that'll enable us to do all this in one operation. There's the bloody neighbours again. One house had their bloody whippersnipper going. Now he's got his whippersnipper going. Crikey. Sunday morning. And as before, we just have to true up our centre. Doesn't take much. That's it. Okay. So we can start roughing this down to the larger diameter of the R8 back to the length behind the head of the chuck so 70 mil two and three quarter yeah it's actually metric this is 50 millimeter diameter so I'll work a metric on this one so 70 millimeters that's where we have to stop so I'll just put a text to mark there Okay. So we'll go, we'll slide down just to get past this initial piece here. roughing out we can do with the DNN, uh, CNNG as this diameter stays approximately this diameter and then we plunge into the smaller diameter of the tail of the R8. The reason why we're leaving this a bit bigger diameter it gives us more support later on in the project when we have this part flipped around and we're gripping by this to do our finishing. Finish turning and finish grinding. So this is the um, CNMG we started the project with. This is this um, Dorian one and I can't really get a good... So you're starting to get a bit of wear on I can feel with my fingernail but no that's the original corner that we've roughed out everything with so same insert. So it's done an amazing job so we're going to switch over, we're going to put a uh, DNMG in, 
and that will allow us to uh, plunge in and undercut this section here. So the inserts for this are an S-car and a DNMG uh, 150408TF uh, and they're suitable for hard materials. So we'll see how these perform. They don't have to take that much off, so as, as all our roughing's pretty well pretty well done now, so being an insert that's suitable for hard and harder materials, uh, it should be it should handle handle this material without a problem. going to put a slight radius in here just to tidy this up.
it will actually lock the carriage, you can feel the um, compound, feel our tool pressure pushing the carriage back. Okay. Okay. So we've got a slight radius in there now. So we'll continue uh, with the skinnier part of the the tail of the R8 end. Well, the weekend's over. It's 6:30 p.m. Sunday so we've had a good crack at getting through our arbors so our um, stub arbor, a couple of face mill arbors, our boring head arbor, um, our ER40 collet chuck and these will be the two piston type slitting saw arbors so we've managed to make a bit of a mess in the shop swing around So we've got a big pile there. The chip, the chip tray, she's getting pretty full under there. The main thing you have to do though, because we've been using flood coolant, is we have given the ways a really good wipe down and a good oil up. So that's just running the tailstock and carriage back several times to make sure there's no moisture left underneath them. But the lathe's done well, our modifications have paid off. The extra um, where we raise the level of oil from here to up here has paid off. That's feeding oil now to the um, apron drive gear, the input drive gear at the rear of the apron. Now that's an exposed gear behind the apron there up underneath and remember we made the tin cover for that to keep all the rubbish out and that's also getting drip fed with oil so that actually runs in oil now and that used to run dry. So with this pressure, um, with the tool pressure that's been um, put on the um, apron, the forces on the apron from machining all as hard as steel, it's, it's, it's really paid off having that, that, that drive gear running in oil. So our chip guard, 
that worked a treat. Keeps all the stuff from going out in there, so that was another plus. And with all the four jaw work we've done, being able to simply click the um, gear into a neutral position, so we had a win with that one. So um, all of our modifications, oh, and the extra oil going into the um, quick change gearbox. So all of our modifications and things that we've been playing around with, I think, are really starting to pay off on this lathe. There's a couple of little bits and pieces I'd like to do to it. Um, probably a better coolant pipe. And we still have to finish our um, dowel. Remember we drilled the compound slide to take the dowel. And I want to drill it so we can use it in two positions. So, no, the lathe has run really well. It's absolutely... Well, that's... Most of that's all from this weekend, from a lot of, well, yeah, today, a little bit from yesterday. So, she's done well in hammering out the arbors. So, next week we'll hopefully finally our design on the two piston type arbors here for the slitting saws. And then probably we'll start finish turning some of the other ones. Uh, Take care, we'll see you back at the lathe in another week or two. Or two, I'll say, because I am flat out up at the block at the moment. Hang on, I'll swing you around. Yeah, so as I was just saying, um, I don't know if I'll get a video out next week because I am flat out up at the block doing everything I can to try and get the slab while well, preparations finished off for the slab um, so I've got the earthworks still to finish on the, fa on the formation which the slab gets poured on so I did have a couple of photos I took the other week which I was going to include in this video but somehow I've managed to delete them <laughs> so um, that's okay I'll take some more next week so anyway take care thanks for sticking with us and we subscribers and hopefully we'll get a few more on board and for 2020. So, cheers.